and welcome back to YouTube's most underproduced, poorly produced Amiga channel, Hold and Modify. This is Q, and yep, I know it's been quite a while, and I know that my, uh, I guess a couple of my most popular videos on my YouTube channel uh, involve the vampire, and what I'm doing today, long overdue, but I have been extremely busy with lots of things, like getting the 3000 up and running, and it's a uh, really current process getting it up and running. But while the 3000 is down, once again, spoiler, uh, you can see uh, all my progress and not progress with the 3000 by checking out the playlists on my YouTube channel. There's a whole bunch of 3000 stuff on there. But today is about the vampire. What I want to do today is uh, get the uh, firmware up to date on this it's i think this is like I, it's old it's the firmware is at least a year and a half old on it and i have a usb blaster that i'm going to uh attempt this with and and, and those of you that follow my channel know that well i don't always have uh the best luck when it comes to working with products that require you to do things to them so i'm going to go ahead and take this apart and uh Get, get to it. Well, so after all of that, there you go. We get a look inside. And I'm thinking I opened the wrong side. Because if I recall... You can open one side and everything just comes sliding out, but obviously that's not going to slide out because I've, yeah, I think you're supposed to open this side. Yeah. See how this has the retaining screws? So if you open this side, you could just pull this out. So I already did this wrong. So yeah, if you have a vampire and you want to open it up, open this side. Okay. Oh, well, yeah, I'm an idiot. So I didn't need to take these screws out. And you don't have to open this. You just have to take one of the ends off so that you can slide this plate off. There you go. Uh, as I said, the most poorly produced YouTube channel featuring Amiga and Amiga related stuff. So yeah, guys, just undo one side of the trims and then this will just slide off. Yeah, yeah, now I have screws everywhere. Screws everywhere. All right, so what I have to do is, oh yeah, I have a uh, four gig in there. Um, the, okay, so what's on here? I should clarify what's on here. This has a so, semi-custom 3.10 ROM. That's not not 3.1. It has 3.10. And that allows this to basically run Amiga OS 3.1. And that's what I do. I have a video in my uh, playlist. Or I actually, yeah, it's my Amiga stuff playlist. I have a video on this. Again, it's one of the videos. I think it's one of the most watched videos I have. But that has um, an explanation of why I run 3.1. I just prefer it, the simplicity of it, the efficiency of it, the originalness of it. So I use a small four gig card. Um, I believe I have this set up with two two gig partitions or maybe like two 1.6 gig partitions or something safe like that. But what I need to do is get this blaster uh, plugged into here using the uh, JTAG. So, or the JTAG or wherever. I gotta I have to find out where it's at. I'm gonna have to go on the website and figure it out. And I'll link the uh, website that has the instructions on how to do this in the description down below. So yes, please, if you do want to care about this and do it, do it yourself, please look at the description and, and hit the link. Don't just count on my video. I'm not even going to show like downloading the software. I don't think that's just boring. I just want to get this open for you guys to look at, get it flashed, hopefully, and then get it booted and we can all go, yay, it's got the newest stuff and it works. Okay. Let's get to it. Okay. So it's been a little while and I'm back. Um, pardon me the bendy here, but as you can see down there, there's the vampire. And here's my German keyboard that it comes with. 
And it's now plugged into my lovely uh, ViewSonic 15 kilohertz compatible monitor that I also have a couple videos on. And have, uh, people have always asked me about that monitor and I in the Facebook group and uh, even here on YouTube. And you just hunt my videos down, guys. There's a couple videos on it. It has the model number and whatnot. So what I had to do is I tried to use that little USB blaster dingus and it didn't work. Um, I did everything right. I installed the driver, but I tried three different USB cables, three different USB cables. None of them worked. I would always fail the Windows hardware check for USB. It just, it says this is a broken USB device. So I did the software version of the core update for the Vampire. And you can do it in the Amiga shell using the Vampire Flash tool. And what you do is you can put the, um, the current core onto a micro SD card, pop it in the Vampire, boot up into your Workbench 3.1 uh, compact flash card, do the Vampire Flash core, do update the core, and then it's going to ask you to uh, turn it off, turn it back on. Now, when you do that, guys, when you do that, your 3.1 workbench is not going to work. It's going to boot up and freak out because now it's using the Vampire, um, you know, Apollo OS Kickstart ROM. And Workbench 3.1 doesn't know what to do with that. So you need to have an original, uh, you know, Vampire Apollo OS install on an SD card, or I'm sorry, on a compact flash card someplace to boot from. And I have my original R4 that it shipped with. And what you do is you just pop out the, um, you know, down here, you just pop out the compact flash, slap in the uh, original Apollo one, boot up, and then you'll get the, uh, you go to the, go to the, their version of shell. And basically you're just going to do all the same stuff. You're going to run the vampire flash, but now you're going to do the vampire flash R4 underscore 310 ROM. And that'll put the, um, the, the, Workbench 3.1 ROM back onto your Vampire. That doesn't overwrite, of course, the updated core. And then you can go ahead and eject the uh, compact flash with the power off, of course. Eject, eject the compact flash and then pop back in your uh, Workbench 3.1 compact flash and then you can boot up. And then you update the uh, SAGA drivers, the SAGA drivers. Uh, it's the, usually they release new Saga drivers when they release new cores, but they'd often do release newer Saga drivers uh, much more often than they release new cores, if that makes any sense. So you're probably going to be updating Saga drivers way more often than you ever do cores. So the latest version as of this video is 2.7. So that's been up to date. So now I have the latest of all the tools that come with a vampire, uh, including their version of, uh, of um, RTG. So unfortunately, uh, and by the way, why didn't I just do this from the start? Why did I even bother with the USB blaster? Well, that's because if you go into Workbench here and you go to screen mode, they have these SAGA modes, which again, this is like their their RTG. And they added these really cool VGA style modes like 1024 by 768, with um, some more like 800, 848 by 480, and... Um, 800 by 600. Those are the modes that I really wanted access to because I like to um, mode promote my 3D software like Lightwave to 800 by 600. So it gives me a nice big clean 4x3 compatible mode. The problem is, at least with my Vampire V4, when I use those new VGA style modes, 1024 or 800 by 600, I just get all this garbly gook on the screen. And it's not garbly gook that's Oh, your monitor is not compatible, garbly gook. It's like the chipset just freaked out, garbly gook. And I've tried it with multiple monitors. And remember, this is the most compatible monitor I have. This does all the Amiga modes. So a lot of people first try to dismiss me and say, yeah, it's your monitor. I can't handle the mode. No, 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 no. That's not the kind of garbly gook I'm talking about. I'm talking about like video buffer memory code that just goes, Bruh. it looks like something Tron derezzing. And even on a reboot, even on a soft reboot, the vampire logo will come up in the beginning and it looks exactly the same. It's all garbly gooked and Tron derezzed. And if you don't do anything, it'll continue to boot and then you're okay. Everything's fine. So the re the soft reboot does work. You don't have to kill the power and turn it back on to a hard reboot when you encounter that garbly gook. 
So because of that, that's why I was going to do the USB flash version, hoping that, you know, flashing the core, you know, outside of it running, you know, just doing a hard uh, ROM update would fix the garbly gook problem with the new modes. I still don't know if, if it would because I can't get it to work because three USB cables don't work with the blaster I've got. So maybe I'll try and find another. I mean, I did buy a USB mini cable from a guy on eBay who guaranteed it to work um, as a data cable. And that's how I got my SCSI to SD card to work. I, if you guys watch my SCSI to SD video, you know that I had some issues trying to get it to run because of the cable. And then I went on eBay and I found a cable that was like guaranteed 125 billion percent to work. And I bought it and it worked. And I got the SCSI to SD updated and that thing's running great in my 3000. So I will go to that guy and try and grab, hopefully he has a USB, um, I guess, mini cable, as it's called. The, the really old style that no one uses anymore. Unfortunately, that's what the vampire uses. Um, so I'll get one of those. And also, that's what the USB blaster uses as well. So it's not just the vampire. I'll get one of those, and then I'll try and go through this whole process again to get it updated. But for now, the reason I made this vampire video is because recently I made that video... Um, well, I didn't make a video. I made a post on the Commodore Amiga Facebook group, which I will link in the description below, comparing um, Lightwave 3D's um, benchmark scene against the Pi 400 running Pi Amiga 2.0 and WinUEE 4.4 running on a 48 core Threadripper. Now, of course, yes, WinUEE doesn't really use threads. It doesn't care. So effectively, you know, basically a 4.2 gigahertz AMD chip running WinUEE. And the scores were really, really close. The uh, uh, Pi 400, I think, did the scene in around seven minutes, and the uh, WinUEE did it in, in like five minutes. That's actually really amazing for the Pi because it is a much slower uh, CPU, and of course, it's a much cheaper system. I mean, you can't even compare the cost of a Threadripper system to a a Pi 400, and, and you wouldn't do it. You would never buy a Threadripper system to, of course, run when you eat. But my point was, you get a lot of performance from that Pi 400 in your Amiga emulation scene. That's really cool. So now I wanted to try um, that on this up-to-date Vampire. So this Vampire has the, the latest core. It's the R7. As, at the time of this video was made, it was R7. It has the latest Saga driver, although that's not really relevant for this. So I'm going to go ahead and fire up this uh, benchmark. We're going to eight bit ham. It's all the same settings as before. We'll smash F9, and uh, we'll let it go. And uh, I'll come back to you in a while, and we'll see what uh, what it did. Well, we are back, and it is finally done. And there you go. There's the beautiful benchmark image we all know and love. And how long did the vampire take? The Pi 400 did it in. Like I said, around five minutes. I'm sorry, no, did it in around seven minutes. And the WinUEE PC did it in around five minutes. So five minutes, seven minutes. But again, those are emulators. And using JIT especially, they are going to rip through, and it's not even a fair comparison. Keep in mind, this is basically a 100 megahertz 68080, or, you know, ideally a little faster than a 68060. Obviously, the next test to be more fair would be to fire up my 68060 Amiga 3000 and do the comparison. And I will do that in another video. I can't do it right now, unfortunately, because the 3000 is currently down, as I said, and not sure when it's going to be back up. It's going to be a while. So what did the vampire do? I mean, that's respectable. And you'll have to forgive this garbage down here. This is not the vampire freaking out. This is this ViewSonic monitor is extremely sensitive to interlace flicker. I don't know what's up with this ViewSonic panel. I don't know if it's just a cheap panel, but yeah, this this screen burn-in you see down here that's flickering, that's something this ViewSonic does with interlace signals, which is why I hate interlace signals on this ViewSonic monitor. It will go away. If you uh, just leave up a gray screen for like an hour or so, it'll go away, the pixels will calm down. Um, or if you just leave it off for a while, it'll, it'll calm down. So that's it, there's the result. That's the uh, Vampire. Um, I did a test like this before a long time ago using the old core, like the R3 core or R2 core, I don't even remember. It was over a year and a half ago. 
Um, so that's an updated score uh, using the latest core. And uh, I hope uh, I hope you all enjoyed that. Bye, guys and girls and things. Thank you.